There are recurring theoretical questions in the field of development economics, surrounding the historical, social and economic conditions that kickstart development of nations. For mainstream authors, progress and prosperity arise as idyllic consequences of a succession of stages in the economic life of societies. Hence, development economics gives little space for investigating the historical origins of the structures and socio-economic power relations between developed and developing countries. This is particularly true in the discipline's lack of engagement with the history of colonialism. As the field turns a blind eye to its colonial roots in imperial power and the bias towards modernization and progress implicit in development theory, equating economic growth to social welfare. On the other hand, critical development scholars coming from both the neo-Marxist tradition and the Latin American structuralist school of thought diverge on this idyllic interpretation of development. This strain of thought came to be part of the dependency theory research paradigm. On a general note, dependency theory can be conceptualized as, quote, a historical condition which shapes a certain structure of the world economy, such that it favors some countries to the detriment of others, and limits the development possibilities of the subordinate economies, to the development and expansion of another economy, to which their own is subjected. A diverse and sometimes internally conflicting body of scholarship Dependency theory studies under development as a historically determined process, implying its occurrence in parallel with development and capitalist expansion. This notion of the development of underdevelopment is one of the most important contributions of dependency scholars. More precisely, underdevelopment refers to the underemployment of socio-economic resources, benefiting dominant classes and states to the detriment of subordinate peripheral economies and groups. In this perspective, development in underdeveloped countries must result from a rupture of the dependent relationship from within, in order to pave the way for endogenous development. Therefore, the notion of delinking provides a theoretical basis for the decolonization movement in the global south. Delinking doesn't mean complete isolationism, but rather building domestic control over many key aspects of the economy which form dependency. For Samira Min, this includes food self-sufficiency, access to raw materials, the ability to produce a significant portion of domestic consumer goods at internationally competitive prices and qualities, a domestic finance system capable of funding local development, and domestic production of capital goods, human capital, and research. Even partial delinking in such a manner gives countries more policy room, and full delinking may not even be possible for most countries. As a common reference for critical development scholars and dependency theorists, Marxist thought can be criticized from a wide variety of perspectives, but its contribution to understanding of capitalist systems of production is undeniable. Indeed, the methods of historical materialism focusing on class analysis to assess uneven development is quite relevant in a world characterized by fundamental power struggles. As a matter of fact, Marxist development theory is fundamental to understanding the contemporary obstacles to and problems of development. Marxist concepts of communist and socialist planning, class analysis, capital dynamism and universalism are fundamental for a holistic examination of capitalism. In the field of Marxist history, fundamental to this holistic approach is the concept of imperialism, which Marx broadly defines as the conquest of new markets and the more thorough exploitation of old ones. This concept was further advanced by scholars and activists such as Hobson, Hilferding, Luxembourg and Lenin. However, these classical theories of imperialism embody analysis of capitalism in the core countries, but did not necessarily incorporate the consequences of imperialism in the colonized countries, as imperialism was originally seen from westernized lenses. Its extension to other economic structures is at the root of dependency theories. Indeed, the notion of dependency originates from neo-Marxist contributions to world system studies. According to Hochwald, the original version of dependency theory originated with the seminal work of Paul Baran, being popularized by Anders Gundel Frank, and further advanced by scholars such as the Antonio dos Santos, Roy Maromarini, and Samira Min. Considering the neo-Marxists 
as an embryonic strain of dependency theorists. Their work concentrates on the analysis of monopoly capitalism and theories of underdevelopment applied to an unbalanced world economic structure. Indeed, from its neo-Marxist roots, dependency theory is characterized by a world systems approach, rejecting the notion that development analysis can be conducted from a national state's perspective. Rather, it is based on the relational features characterizing the world system, from which some nations benefit and others are subordinated. Building on the seminal contributions of Marx's political economy, the neo-Marxists set out to reframe his valuable contributions in the context of the 20th century by reaffirming the concept of dependency. However, this concept and its auxiliary hypotheses of underdevelopment, unequal exchange, and the international division of labor grew bigger than the world systems approach, defining the diverse scholarship of dependency theory and its different strains.